It's been two months since I've shown you around the garden. A lot has happened, so this is a tour of Sea Town in early June. This place two months ago has completely changed. It was always my goal for this area to be um, a perennial wildlife garden. So two months ago it looked like this. And it took about a month and a half to get it completely weeded and ready for planting. The plants have been in the ground for around two months now and some are doing better than others. That is the valerian, which is doing okay. We've got some sedums. That is an echinacea that I divided from another plant in the uh, garden and that's a self-seeded nasturtium. We've got a bunch of lavenders. And this is one of my oyster plants that is flowering. I'm quite surprised by that because I planted them in quite late and I thought they were kind of dead, but it survived. That is on one of my other sedums, which has got really nice dark foliage. And this is a, an aquilegia that has finished flowering, and those are the seed heads. Then I got distracted by the bird that just landed. It was probably waiting for me to leave to eat some strawberries. Back in the wildlife garden, um, that's a peony that is slowly growing. We have a lot of self-seeded uh, poppies and a few weeds as well. Next to the weeds and poppies, there's an agastache black adder. It's doing pretty good in that location and a bit further up we've got some marguerite alaskas but i'm not actually sure if that's what it is because this is the flower stalk and i don't think marguerites flower like that um, i will just wait for it to flower and then double check to see if that's what it is and this is our unfinished pond area we still need to dig out a pond and line it up but it hasn't happened yet because we don't have the time in the bricked off area was an Alba echinacea, a white type, but that has died. And next to it was some wild garlic that is um, winding down for the season. The plant in the pot is a very neglected blackberry, but I don't think I'm going to put it back in the ground. So the rest of the wildlife garden is, um, that's a peony, that is an Achillea cer queen cerise and another Achillea. And yeah, we have a bunch of uh, lavenders, but I think I want to get a bigger varieties. I think the ones that I got were... Mini, that's an aquilegia. And this is my second oyster plant, which is not doing as well as the other one. But it's not dead, so I've got high hopes. That is one of the hundreds of salsied violas all over the garden. A sedum and a peony that I put uh, around some bricks, so I wouldn't think it was a weed. So the uh, last thing to do in this area is to make the pond, and I'm thinking about gating it as well. Across from the wildlife garden are six garden beds that still need to be a bit weeded and cleared until I can uh, plant some things in. Over winter we actually covered most of these beds in black plastic to stop the weeds, which really helped a lot. We barely weeded when you took the plastic off. But this bed was an ant's nest, so I'm going to show you what it looked like when I took the plastic off. There were hundreds of like ant pupa being moved around. It was kind of gross. I left them do what they wanted to do with their babies. Um, maybe birds came and ate them, but I haven't seen them since. And I think the ants nest has moved since because I don't see any ants in that bed anymore. Over the weekend, I planted a an aubergine bed. So there's nine different types of aubergines there. Some are mini aubergines and others are long and others are fat and I mulched it with straw to help retain some mo moisture because this is a very exposed full sun all day type of bed and next to it we have the peppers bed so these are all different types of paprika some capsicums as we would say in Australia we've got some purple ones there's a, that's a little flower there purple ones yellow ones green uh, Different kinds of, all different kinds of uh, colours, so I'm excited for that. The last bed in this row still needs to be cleared, but there's some poppies growing, also some poppies with some aphids growing, and um, some violas as well, which have spread all over the garden. And here are a pile of bamboo sticks that we need to use to uh, support our tomatoes this year. There is a huge dump site of old bamboo support sticks from a tree nursery in a town that is about 15 minutes from us. So this year, instead of growing the tomatoes up a string, I'm going to grow them up the bamboo sticks. So they're like this, more supported. 
of interplanted some broccoli in between them but there is definitely signs of bird damage because of the leaves look a bit nibbled. This is a leekscape from a leek that has been in the ground for a couple of years. This leek has been since the previous owner had the place around two years ago. This is my garlic and uh, walking onion bed. I've got some feverfew flowers in that little area. And this is a, an Egyptian walking onion. So these um, onions, uh, they sprout to flower and then it gets really heavy, falls on the ground. And once it touches the ground, it starts to spring up a new onion plant in that area, which is why they're called walking onions. They're really interesting. It's the first time I've grown them, so I'm interested to also see how they taste as well. But I'm assuming they're the same as like shallots. In between my garlic are some parsnip babies that I uh, will hope to eat by Christmas. Under this netted bed are a whole bunch of different types of brassicas. We've got some igloo, igloo cauliflower, some pur purple broccoli, a Romanesco broccoli. I put them under because we have lots of birds in the garden that tend to really like eating these type of uh, vegetables, as you can see in the tomato bed. And the netting is doing quite well protecting this area. Next to the brassicas are onions. I put them in quite late. Um, they aren't as big as they were from last year but some well one has already started bulbing up there and the uh, row behind is definitely a red type of onion because you can see it on the stem i found a lot of little bits of strawberries left over from birds scavenging from the strawberry bed um, and these are my potatoes growing in some grow bags i have four varieties one in each grow bag they are doing pretty well and I'm quite surprised by that because I planted them out very very late this year. The understory of the plum tree is doing really well. I just need to do some pruning and some maintenance and then it should look a little bit more tidier. And I've uh, replaced all the little pebbles in my bird bath with one huge rock. And I think it is a success because I've seen bugs use it as a support to drink. The plum tree itself is completely overladen with so many fruits that the branches are now drooping. All the branches are pretty much covered in little baby plums. Last year we didn't have as much because when it flowered there was a big freeze and a lot of the flowers fell off but this didn't happen this year so we have a lot of plums that I need to um, thin out later on in the season. The compost bay area is looking a bit ratty right now. That's one of my projects to clear it out and uh, tidy it up a bit. Uh, I did see a weasel a few weeks ago which was really fun to see. I have a bunch of voles in the garden so that's probably why it's attracted a weasel. Back at the front of the garden is the green gauge uh, plum tree that I've planted. I noticed that there's a vole hole right next to it. I haven't uh, ruined it yet but the tree itself is doing pretty well. The front flower bed hasn't been uncovered yet, but we still have a lot of self-seeded plants inside. That's a sunflower there. These are lots of little calendulas that have popped up from previous plants from the previous year. And I've got some self-seeded nigellas, which is a really nice surprise because I forgot to sow nigellas this year. We are slowly uncovering the rest of the beds at the front. I'm a bit apprehensive about it because I know there's definitely a bunch of mole and vole um, holes in those beds because I've seen the vole a couple of times. Um, this area, which is where the dahlias are, is mostly empty except for some mint that's come from the neighbours. Uh, this year I think I will just put a bunch of flowers, other flowers, not dahlias, because I had a bit of fungus um, issues with the dahlias that I dug up. Um, and this is a uh, self-seeded Brisa Maxima that um, I had planted near the same area, so that was a nice surprise. The uncovered strawberry bed, uh, the strawberries are finally slowly ripening, but unfortunately because it's uncovered we've got a lot of birds and probably other little critters that are picking the strawberries off and eating them. Like this one, I have a bunch of unfinished strawberries, but apparently they come back and finish them because I uh, checked in. It was gone when I came back later in the afternoon. This is another covered bed. It's full of different types of lettuces and um, things that would probably get nibbled by birds and other insects. The hoops and netting 
have been really helpful with protecting this crop because I think otherwise they would be totally decimated by the pigeons next door. And last month we built a strawberry cage for the strawberries, uh, str one of the strawberry beds. It's been really helpful, but unfortunately um, some of the strawberries are growing through the wire like that. And if we don't push them before they form, it's really hard to push them back in. So that one is definitely stuck. The strawberry is a strawberry cage has been really good with protecting the ripe strawberries from birds and other animals. But um, the only downside is that it's quite hard to put it back on after you've taken it off and not um, completely trap or break off other strawberry bits that are not in the cage when you close it. This year I went really crazy with growing different types of brassicas. There's three types in this. That is a kaylet. The middle row is a summer purple broccoli. And the last row is a perennial variety, which is a perennial called nine star perennial broccoli. This apple tree I inherited from the previous owner. I actually moved it last year, so it didn't have any fruit fruits because he got a bit stressed. But this year we have little baby apples. The guy who owned it previously didn't really take care of it, so I'm quite surprised it's still alive. Um, and this area behind it is completely messy and still needs to be cleared out. My Maya lemon is um, leafing again, but I don't know if it's going to survive because it's like leafing from the base of the tree because the top part completely died off during the winter. In this crate are a bunch of tomatoes that I still need to plant and there are four tomatillo plants that I also need to put in the ground. Those leaves don't look that great. I'm not sure if that's sick or something, but most of these should be in the ground by the end of this weekend. And these are my Cosmos um, plants. I put them out so they could harden off before I planted them out. Um, a lot of them have already started to flower and I've topped um, most of them as well so they can branch out more. Those are Aqualegia seedlings that I grew from seed and I'm quite surprised that they've actually grown. That's a mixed columbine mix, so there's a different types of colours. Um, these are, that is a syrinth. It's a honeywort plant and it's flowering so I need to put it in the ground. In the greenhouse there are so many dahlias, this might as well be a dahlia nursery. I have a lot of them on a shelf, but I still didn't have enough space for all of them. Um, a lot of them have already started growing from the tubers, which is great to see. And I have topped a lot of them and they've already started branching, as you can see from the little shoots there. And this one, I also cut it a few weeks ago and it's also branching out from um, the other, other little branches. So these are definitely going to be put in very soon. These are my zinnias. They are not doing very well. Something's eating them and they look a bit anemic. Those also really need to go into the ground. These are more dahlias, but these are not mine. My friend gave me some of her tubers. She doesn't have enough space, so I have grown them on for her and also topped them. Uh, there's a few there that I actually grew from seed last year that she also wanted to keep. So those are those. And these are a bunch of flocks that I've grown from seed. This red one is called Brilliance. I didn't get many um, plants from the seeds that I planted, but I did get a few sugar stars. That one is sugar stars. And there is, um, there's also sugar stars. There's another one there that I also grew last year and that one is creme brulee. I need to pinch the tops of these off to encourage more branching so they can flower more. I have so many other little seedlings that I really need to put in the ground. That's a sage. Also on that tray are some aubergines. That tray right there was some feverfew and these are really thirsty aubergine plants. Um, I ended up giving them some water afterwards to help hydrate them. 90% of all these seedlings I grew from seed. And that is the state of my greenhouse right now. I have a lot to still plant out, a lot to tidy up, and I really want to clean out the greenhouse too because it's a bit musty. And the newest addition to Sea Town is a little pergola. This was made about uh, two weeks ago. It's to help support the grapes um, because they're just basically flopping all over the place. 
Um, Erwin, he painted the bottoms of them with some waterproof paint, so that should stop the rotting. And we also cleared and wood chipped the area underneath it, so we could have a really nice uh, sitting down area underneath the grapevines. We might also staple some more, um, like maybe some wiring up there to help support the grapes more. I'm not sure how heavy they will be once the grapes start forming. And that was the end of the early June Seatown tour.